Hello everyone, and welcome to the June Ami Ami recap. I've been a bit sick the last few days, so I don't know if my voice is gonna hold up. We're gonna see how it goes. So let's start it off with this Kokoro Nendo from Princess Connect. This is so precious. I don't really like that faceplate, but everything else about this is just so pure, so happy, so fun. I've always liked Kokoro's colors, and I think they've done a great job with her hair as well. I just really like it. Kind of want to buy it just to soothe my heart. I can't remember at all if I've talked about this moth. But either way, I, I love that they're doing these random whatever male Fire Emblem characters. I adore what they've done here with this cape. The shading here is so nice. I think the front of it is less impressive. There's okay detail there, it's just not as good as that cape. And I do think his face looks a bit weird. He looks too much like a pretty anime boy. I legit thought this was a character from Aragairu, but it's not. It's Masaka from Railgun. I never got into Rail decks at all. I'm not a biggest fan of the colors and patterns they've chosen here. It just feels a bit eh to me. This massive black chunk of plastic that holds up her foot is just very, very ugly. It's really distracting for me, especially when I see it like this. It's just my eye goes straight to that. Palm size Rengoku? Who cares? He's tiny. What the hell? What year is it? Why is Mega House doing Macross 7 figures? This is sick. I actually really like this guy. He reminds me of um, Vash from Trigun. But yeah, that's wild. Look at this outfit. On the other hand, the one of the girl that they've done, I just... I don't like that much. I think it's partially the outfit. She doesn't seem as visually interesting to me. Especially compared to this fella, like... Goddamn! What is this? Is this like some other slime related anime? It's over Japan and slimes. This seems like the classic case of nice looking figure ruined by awful, awful looking base. The rest of the figure seems fairly competent. I think the hair looks quite nice. I always like big hats like this. And I think the gold trim they've done here looks very, very nice. Though I'm not sure if it's actually going to look like that in the final product. And the slimes are kind of cute. See, I kind of dig this other than the base. And maybe the pose looks a bit awkward from other angles, but from the front, it looks fine. This has to be a re-release, right? <laughs> Figures aren't this cheap anymore. Is her sweater really long? It makes her legs look really short. How many times did they re-release this Rathalos? I swear, this whole month just seems to be like re-releases at this point. Why is Odin's Sphere suddenly getting so many figures? This is weird. Very weird. So at the very least, this Gwendolyn is a re-release from a 2019 figure, but this Oswald is new, as far as I can tell. The contrast between his pretty anime boy head and then the rest of his body is just <laughs> so ridiculous. It makes it feel like a Kingdom Hearts character or something, it just, it just looks wrong. All things considered though, like, it is a pretty unique outfit. Maybe if I played more of the game, I'd be like, oh hell yeah, let's go. But on the other hand, I really like the Gwendolyn. I guess underneath the dress it looks like this. Pretty neat. Can't believe they're getting away with making wedding bikini figures of lolly characters. I swear to god. Oh. Oh. I was so chuffed when I saw this a few weeks ago. It's, it's so pretty. And then I forgot it existed and I've just been surprised and joyed by it once again. Look at it! Look at that fluffy tail! Bella's gonna tell me you don't like fluffy tail? Mm. For what this is, I think it's pretty fairly priced. I have no idea who saw the Reina. I assume they're a Chinese manufacturer. But I really hope they have the quality control to like actually pull this off because this is gorgeous. The water effect is so nice, like, it's blue where it needs to be blue and then gets out of the way once it gets to the top. So that it's not just, it's not distracting at all, it's just... It's perfect. <laughs> and then we have another figure that I have no idea about. This reminds me of an Eastream figure we saw maybe a month or two ago. Kind of gives me the same sort of vibe. I will say the face is rather unique. And I really, really like the coloring of the hair. The rest of it, I think, is a bit too risque for me. But I do appreciate what they're going for. A lot of parts on this come off for some reason. Like, I, I quite enjoy the full version, but then, you know, the, the top comes off, and then the then the bottom comes off, and I'm like, well, wh wh why? Why, though? The Idol Master figures are back doing crazy, unique things again. 
I feel like lately they've been missing more than they've been hitting for me. And I feel like this figure is so, so close to greatness. But then once you look at it for like more than a second, you see that the vine just goes nowhere. It just stops. It's like... What? Everything about this, other than the cutoff vines, is like so nice, so cute. But it's like... This is so dirty when they start editing in like extra vine here to make it look like there's more but then all of the other pictures show that there isn't that's just really sus did i ever talk about the beast style madoka it's very wholesome surprisingly wholesome i wish more beast stars were like this anyway homura is here now she's just as precious this is great i quite like the layering on the dress i prefer this version of beast style than to like any of the other ones they normally do it suits the characters so much more. Like, if you're gonna make a B-style of them, at least it's this. This is weird. This looks more like Shimarin from your camp than some Shimarin figures I've seen. I don't like the pose and I don't like the outfit. She just looks like she's wearing doilies or something. This is not aesthetic at all. And they want 170 bucks for it. <laughs> ah yes, my favorite part of Sword Art Online. War of the Underworld where everyone gets in swimsuits. Aside from the theme, I don't actually hate this. I think the face is pretty cute, and the hair seems okay, and what, what clothing there is seems to be okay as well. Basically, my main concern is that that's a pretty mighty lean there. Just concerned about the structural stability. I guess it is what it is. So this is very strange. Kekai Sensen hasn't been relevant for, like, years at this point. So, one, I don't know why this figure exists now, it's not necessarily a minor character, but he's definitely not a main character. Two, this is manufactured by Chugai Mining. And if anyone wants to tell me who Chugai Mining are, please be my guest. This is, this seems to be the first figure that they're ever manufacturing. And this is very, very expensive. It's just a guy in a suit. And then there's one effect piece. This is maybe the most confusing Nendoroid I've ever seen. I am very, very skeptical about this. From what I can tell, Toy Tech did a very, very bad job, and they've worked with Good Smile for years, so I absolutely don't trust this company to do this any good. It's very concerning to me because recently Good Smile has been trusting the Nendoroid brand with a lot of untested companies, and this is another one for the pile, and if they keep doing this, I feel like this is going to ruin the Nendoroid brand. Good Smile, please stop. Why did they put the Isn't Order of Rabbit Girls in military uniforms? This is bizarre. <laughs> Feels like she's too stiff. I don't know. This girl has a lot more personality. I kinda like her. It's still really weird looking. Very glad to see the Black Rock Shooter Pop Up Parade looks this good. You could tell me this is a scale, and I'd be like, yep, yeah, 100%. Looks great. Even when we zoom in, it still looks great. Hair looks really, really nice as well, and the blue effect piece is just. Mm. Chef's Kiss. It's done a fantastic job. That could be the best pop-up parade I've seen. I think I talked about this Ram in the One Hobby recap, didn't I? Coming back to it now, I still really like Ram herself. I think they've done a wonderful job with the battle damage on her outfit. There's some really nice weathering there that we don't typically see on figures. And I do think it looks pretty cool. So one thing that bothers me is how much she's like off the base. I feel like that's a bit sketchy. My other issue with it is that the base looks kind of strange. I kind of get the effect they're going for, it just looks wrong. I think you might be able to tell by now that I don't really like grassy green on a base. I feel like it's really hard to pull off. But then having no grass in the middle just makes it look really weird. I can't really get behind it with that base, unfortunately. But from an angle like this, I do think it looks pretty cool. Avengers Assemble. Or something, I, I don't know. What the hell, Ami Ami got a creeper plushie? Hell yeah. Add this to cart, let's go. Let's go. Now might be a good time to remind you that I have a CD Japan affiliate link. If you do want to buy anything in this video, or just basically anything from Japan, please use my CD Japan affiliate link down in the description or the comment section, and I'll get a little bit of money for your purchase, and you'll get a sense of pride and accomplishment, and my love. Thanks to everyone who's already done this, your support really means a lot to me. I wish I finished watching Rent-A-Girlfriend. I like her little head tie. It's cute. I don't really care about Polynian stuff, but if you do care, you can check out my boy Kingu. 
he likes reviewing these. This Polynesian is like the first one to really interest me. I'm a bit of a sucker for Fox Girls or whatever the hell this is. Speaking of, we're finally getting League of Legends scales with this KDA Ari. Honestly can't believe it's taken them like 11 or 12 years to start making scales. And of course when we do get one it's KDA. So Ari herself, like, I don't care that much about. Sculpt seems okay, face seems kind of weird, but for the most part I'm okay with it. But what I do love is her like crazy crystal KDA tail that that they've done. This is like the coolest thing to me. It's like really low poly and catches the light which makes for really nice shots like this. I just think that's such a cool effect. Really this is all I care about. It's just cool. Why? Why is she gonna be sitting like that? Can't she sit more ladylike? I always love how they incorporate the slime into all of these figures. It's always really nice and creative. I don't know fam. Pose just really puts me off it. It's uh, it's too much for a lolly like her. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. I swear there's so many characters that look like this. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. It's an attractive character design. Yeah, I like that fella more. He looks cool. I want to see him painted. He also looks way bigger than her. Is she supposed to be that small? Her legs are like half the width of his. Overall, I think it's a pretty attractive figure. It would appear as if it's on the cheaper side of things, but given how small she is, you know, I feel like that's as much as I'd really pay. But yeah, I dig it. And another one from Kodobukiya, which is an Artifacts J of Satoru Gojo. I finally started Jujutsu Kaisen. Hopefully I'll know more about these characters next time, because they're getting so many figures. But this one, you know, I have to say, this is, this is boring as hell. He's just solid black. There's nothing to it. Pose is boring. No effect parts. Face looks weird as well. I think this is a straight up miss by Kodobukiya. I don't think I could ever recommend this. Unless it was the same price as like a pop-up parade. Okay, what is this? This is a pineapple poodle. Is this what we're doing right now? <laughs> it's huge. Get your own pineapple dog. The Zombieland Saga wedding dresses continue. I've been surprisingly into these. I don't like this as much as the girl from last month, but um, I think she's still pretty cute. I think the biggest part that weirds me out is that they've obviously spent a lot of time in sculpting her dress. Like the one underneath this big transparent blue thing. And you just can't see it. I don't know if that's an issue with how it looks in photos and it might look better in real life. But you can see here there's like, there's nice colouring and stuff going on in there. We just, we don't get to see anything. Let me see it for you, come on. Alta just does weird stuff sometimes, don't they? I don't understand Berserker Musashi. Is this supposed to be America or is this not supposed to be America? I don't know. It feels very America to me. I guess you can expect the typical Alta quality in all of the parts where there are clothes, but there's just not a lot of clothes. <laughs> and I'm just really not feeling like this is worth this much money. I feel like you get Fat Company to do this figure and it would turn out the same. I'd rather Alta spend their time on like superbly detailed clothing and stuff and this just, this ain't it. This ain't it fam. I believe Fortnite is just selling an army man with a wiener. These Eurocamp minifigures are so precious. I really enjoy Anna's design and Chikua is so so cute all the time. This Nendoroid is dope. It has what might be one of the greatest faceplates of all time. Look at this. Look at that. I kind of want to buy it just for this. It's literally, it's the Dorito face. It's the nice meme face. It's, that's it. It's it. This is it. Ugh. Actually, I think this looks cool from like every other angle. So the thing that put me off at the very beginning was Motoko's face and the whole pose kind of just looks strange. In every other photo, I really like this for some reason. I take everything back. I think this is cool as hell. The LEDs seem kind of weak, but I think it does a good enough job because that outfit is so glossy, it reflects well. So I think it's not too bad. These really caught me by surprise. Kotobukiya are making scale figures of the three Egyptian gods from Yu-Gi-Oh. I do think Obelisk looks not that great, and I don't really like Ra because the pose looks weird. But Slifer, hell yeah! 
Check this guy out. He looks sick. His head is really cool. And Ooh, and they look so good with the Yugi Artifacts J. Ooh. But yeah, what, what a crazy thing to happen so many years after its relevancy. I guess there'll always be love for the uh, OG of everything. To me, this is like the most beautiful figure I've seen in a long time. Something about this speaks to me on, on a lot of levels. God, this is a beautiful figure. I love the coloring so so much, and I think the I think the character design in general is also just really quite attractive. I wish she was wearing pants. I mean, that's the one thing I don't necessarily like. Even here, there's like gradation to like what like pink or something where the hair gets tied up. It's such a nice little detail. It makes the hair look so much cooler. Kind of want to buy it. I guess we'll see what happens. Didn't think I could go a whole month without talking about Kurumi, did ya? Yep. It's a wedding Kurumi. Who would take the dress off? Ah, I really enjoy this Miku. I think her hair looks quite nice, and I really like the colors here. I think her hair is super nice and vibrant, and the black and white give it a lot of room to just pop. And these little frilly skirt bits, you know, they aren't too bad either. For what this is, and for how well made it seems to be, I feel like 140 bucks for it is entirely fair, and it's another one I kind of want to buy. We're getting into a whole uh, things I want to buy section right now. <laughs> Seems like Ulta has answered my prayers midway through the video with this 1-7 scale of Belfast. I think I mainly just like the little boar down here. He's really cute. I think they've done an excellent job with her face. It just looks so mature, I guess. I'm not the biggest fan of the dress, but I still think they've managed to make it work without detracting from like how classy the figure looks. She do be kind of expensive though. It's probably in the price range I'd expect for them. And Good Smile has finally put up pre-orders for their Modred. This looks eerily similar to the Fat Company one. <laughs> Comparing the two now, I think it looks much, much better. It just seems like a strict upgrade, like it's 1.7 scale instead of 1.8. It's... I feel like this is the Modred figure to have now. And she's even got like this crazy red lightning effect, which looks so cool. I think GSC has hit it out of the park with this. And if you're a fan of Modred, I'm sure you'll be uh, drooling over this one. Oh my god. I thought I was nearly done, and then Furuju dropped five figures and Eastream dropped three, and I'm like, oh my god. But let's start with Korone. She's like probably the best VTuber. This figure looks really cute. It's by Spirit Tail, which is Taito's premium figure brand. So we don't actually know if they're any good at scale figures. So I would pre order this with caution. However, I think the prototype is absolutely adorable, and if it does look like that, I'm sure you'll be happy with it. I was just saying there's better Satoru Gojo figures, and here's one. I, I haven't even looked at it yet, and I know it's better than that Kodobukiya one. This is really, really cool. He also comes with two different heads. I love the presence of this. I think it attracts a lot of attention, but then it gives him a lot more shelf presence that I think he might really need. Otherwise, He's just very boring. I don't think it's as good as the E Stream one, but still in its own right, it's a much better choice than either the Mega House or Kotobukiya. <laughs> Another goddamn Rem in a wedding dress? Are you serious? Are you serious for you? <laughs> We're doing this? Stop. Oh hey, it's Ryomen Sukuna. I feel like the base is a lot more cooler than he is. And I assume the high price tag is all because of the base. Well, it's a shame you're not really going to see much of the back of it, because that's where all the attention seems to have gone. The guy himself, he seems just very, very stock standard, plain. Reminds me of very mega house slash prize figure level of not really caring about shading. So yeah, I'm not really impressed by this at all, other than the base. Ooh, Furyu's doing Azuline figures now? I didn't know. Maybe I did, and I forgot. For me, though, it seems kind of boring, and I'm not really a fan of the red base. I would have liked to see the base use the same blue as this parasol. I think that would have tied in a lot better with her color scheme and been much less offensive to my eyes. And yeah, I guess she just seems a bit expensive, but Agilene figures always are. I feel like there's a lot more Agilene figures that look way cooler or prettier than she does. <laughs> yeah, not too sold on that one. And we have a random Madoka side story swimsuit figure. I really like this Kyubei styled swim ring. Actually, I don't mind it that much. I think the sculpt and everything is 
really playful and fun and it's a, it's at least unique like i have to give it credit where credit's due <laughs> it's just that it's not a figure for me but you know i can definitely see people liking this for sure okay so eStream has two more ReZero figures this time the pairing is ram and rem i'm very glad that they're branching out into something different with these they seem to be experimenting more with doing a very unique and involved base rather than just chucking effect parts out of figure and then jacking up the price like two times as much. That being said, I think the price is still way too high, but at least the theme and everything is very unique. She's doing like this graffiti name writing thing, but she hasn't finished the M, so it looks kind of weird because it's just, it's just Ra right now. <laughs> and it seems to actually stick out a lot more than I was ever anticipating it was from that other angle. I will say that every E stream figure looks really well produced on the character side, I think the part where this loses me is that there's just not enough neon in the base. I would have liked them to just chuck way more neon on there and just make it really colourful, but I guess it's the stylistic choice. The grunge is fine, everything looks really well weathered. If it turns out looking like this, then yeah, I think it's a great figure. But yeah, I think, you know, $400 for this, come on. Like, it's a nice figure, but it's not that nice, right? You get two very nice 1-7 scales for that price. And I just don't think that Eastream offers enough to warrant spending so much money on them. Rem is the same in a lot of ways to the Ram, but I think she's quite a step down. And it's weird to me that they're charging a thousand yen more for her. I think Ram had the better base and the better neon theme. So this Rem to me is just like, whatever. You already have so much choice for Rams. I don't know if anyone's going to choose this one. So I feel like you really have to deeply love these characters to really spend that much money on a single figure. Now, Eastream did have a third figure, which is my Sakurajima from Bunny Girl Senpai. I've never seen Force Perspective done like this in a figure before, which is very, very interesting. If we take a look from the side, you see that everything's like actually modeled in 3D there. It's just all squished to work in the Force Perspective. And it's cool that like, I guess it even works from this angle as well. I would love to see this in real life, and as you'd expect, yes, Maya looks great. It's just such an interesting piece. I'm not sure if I'm ready to attack this price. I feel like it's probably still overpriced, but I will reserve judgment until I see this in the wild somewhere. This is cute. It's some sort of fox idol waifu by any gift. I like the pose and I like the colors, and it seems like she comes with an alternate faceplate, which we've been seeing a lot tonight, which is fun. Seems pretty competent, but yeah, I have no idea who this character is. Amakuni has this Brunhilde 1-7 scale. I've never liked her character design. I don't know if it's the colors. It doesn't really look nice to me. And her face always just looks so sad. I don't really understand what the character's supposed to be. It's just a mess of everything. The figure is no exception. <laughs> Yo, Pog, it's Mythos time. Woo! They have this green lady from AFK Arena. God, this is beautiful. Everything they do is beautiful. I guess she doesn't have like so much detail herself, especially on her clothing, but all the effort they put into things on the base is just so, so nice. Look at all the fingies. I think that's really attractive. I love the colors. Kind of reminds me of like Illidan or something. Mythos, every time. Every time I love it. <laughs> Hamakuni also has Hamakaze from Kankale. She do be being a boat girl. <laughs> this figure, I guess, is kind of inoffensive from a sculpt standpoint, though I do think her legs are weirdly shiny. I assume the price is jacked up a bit because they've had to do this huge boat backpack. So I guess it's just like that, hey? I had to check if this was new or not. It is. It is new. But Shura and Shui already have scales individually that kind of already look like this. But I think either way, this is still a beautiful figure. Especially the coloring, I just I absolutely love. The gradation on the hair is just beautiful rainbow for both of them. I saw some people complaining about the orange base. It doesn't really bother me that much. And considering that you're basically getting two figures in one for this, the price isn't that bad. So yeah, I really quite like it. I think it's really, really pretty. I feel like I already made a joke about why anyone wants this. I still don't understand, but there you go. Tiger bunny version. God help us all.
This is Texas Elite 2 by Good Smile Arts Shanghai from Arknights. Last month I went on my little tangent about Arknights figures and trying to get the base to look as good as the actual key art for them. I think this one does a great job. I don't think there's been anything egregiously left out of the figure, which is a really positive sign. For something so like for something so crazy and technical looking, I'm surprised that this figure isn't much more expensive. I really enjoy the base. It just gives off a very rule of cool vibe, which is something I always enjoy. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. I've been disappointed by Good Smile Arts Shanghai, but this one to me seems like it could be quite a good pickup. And finally, we've got one more Kurumi detective version, which is like a Sherlock Holmes version. And I love this. This is so cute. It's far from like the most interesting in your face Kurumi figure, but god it's such a cute outfit, come on. I guess the shading and colouring could be a little bit better, but it makes me happy. And I think that's the main thing, right? What if it makes you happy? I'd like to see her be smoking from that pipe though. <laughs> so that's gonna do it for the Ami Ami recap this month. If you enjoy these videos and like to support the channel, remember to like the video, subscribe to me, and use my CD Japan affiliate link. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This has been the Ando Experience, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!